This is KGW News at noon. The rest of us, even if we're healthy, we need to make sacrifices now for not only our health, but the well-being and safety of, of others as well. That, of course, is Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler talking today about the continued spread of COVID-19. He's asking Portland residents to stay home for Thanksgiving, but also continue to support local businesses. The city, along with the entire state of Oregon, enters a COVID freeze on Wednesday, and it could last four weeks for the Portland area. Mayor Wheeler says he knows that will hurt a lot of local businesses. I want to encourage people as we go into the holiday shopping season, to buy local and to shop local. And obviously that means doing it as safely as possible under the COVID restrictions, but I would really encourage people to continue to support those restaurants that are going to be providing takeout, those retailers that will remain open under the heightened COVID restrictions. The mayor said he had planned to join family in Palm Springs for Thanksgiving, but he's canceled that trip and he now plans to stay close to home. So the new statewide restrictions in Oregon take effect again on Wednesday. For most counties, the plan is to keep the restrictions in place for two weeks, but in some areas, again like Multnomah County, they'll be in place for at least four weeks. So social gatherings will be limited to six people and from no more than two households. Restaurants will be takeout only. Other businesses like gyms have to shut down completely. Grocery stores and other retailers have to limit capacity. Churches have to limit attendance. Businesses need to mandate working from home as much as possible and indoor visits at long term care facilities will not be allowed at all. Again, there are also new restrictions happening in Washington and most of the ones there start tonight. So for restaurants and bars, only outdoor dining and takeout will be allowed. There will be capacity limits for stores and also capacity limits for churches in Washington and choirs and bands will not be allowed to perform during services. Weddings and funerals, those can be held with limited attendance, but receptions are not allowed. Gyms will also be closing in Washington, along with entertainment spots like movie theaters and zoos. And social gatherings with people outside your household, again, this is in Washington, will not be allowed unless you either quarantine for 14 days prior or you quarantine for seven days and also test negative for COVID-19. So this latest round of restrictions on businesses are sure to bring with it some more layoffs. But the Oregon Employment Department says it's already preparing for an increase in unemployment claims. And this time, they say the department is in a much better place to process those claims than it was at the start of the pandemic. The department says it'll be hiring members of the National Guard to help increase its claims processing capacity. And that means out of work Oregonians will hopefully get their benefits quicker. President Trump now admits on Twitter that Joe Biden won the election and then he takes it back. Tracy Potts has the latest on the election fallout, the transition and the surge of coronavirus cases. He won. Words the world has been waiting to hear from President Trump. I think that's the start of an acknowledgement. But followed by multiple disputed claims of election fraud, declaring I concede nothing and I won the election. President Obama's advice on 60 Minutes. If you want at this late stage in the game to be remembered as somebody who put com country first, uh, it's time for you to do the same thing. But the administration is still blocking Joe Biden's access to intelligence briefings, and his team isn't authorized to work with the government on vaccine distribution. We need to be talking to them as quickly as possible. Just this morning, drug maker Moderna announced they have a vaccine ready for emergency approval that's nearly 95% effective. Uh, Pfizer made a similar announcement last week. So now we have two vaccines that are really quite effective. So I think this is a really strong step forward to where we want to be about getting control of this outbreak. 11 million Americans have now been infected with COVID-19, and that number is growing daily. We are in a very dangerous period, the most dangerous public health period since 1918. Democrats are pushing Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to approve relief. No more stomping your feet. Get something done. COVID aid going nowhere and the transition on hold. And the Trump team is dropping a key claim in its Pennsylvania lawsuit against the election results there. They had claimed that hundreds of thousands of ballots were read without their people watching, but now they're pulling that out of the lawsuit. The rest of it continues with a hearing set for tomorrow. Tracy Potts, NBC News. 
This is new here at the noon hour. Portland fire crews tackled a fire just off of West Burnside earlier this morning. So this was in the old Kingston. The building is unoccupied. No one was hurt, but there is damage in both the basement and the main floor of the building. Firefighters say it started on the outside and then spread to spaces between the floors of that building. We're going to talk about ski season here for a moment before we pass the baton over to Rod Hill. With all the new snow on the mountain, many ski resorts are looking to open soon. Ski resorts are not included in these recent COVID restrictions. Timberline will open next Wednesday. That's the day before Thanksgiving. Mount Hood Meadows hopes to open or they hope to have enough snow that is to open on Friday of next week, the day after Thanksgiving and Ski Bowl is shooting to open at the start of December. Whenever the season gets started, be sure to check with the resorts on COVID restrictions. In most cases, you will have to reserve a time online before you head up to the mountain.